Thank you, Ketrako, for welcoming us here to Otum. Otum is, uh, is uh, where we have one of our substation, new substation, which is uh, helping us to, it's a new line coming out of uh, Takwal uh, and going towards Kitale to remove the constraint on the, on the other line on the other side. That will ensure that uh, uh, we are able to evacuate power uh, out of the generators in the North Rift. We've had for a while constraint or um, incapacity to evacuate all the power generated from uh, some solar plants, one on this side called uh, Sedet and Selenke towards Eldoret. Uh, and what that happened when we finished developing the power plant is that uh, it constrained or inhibited us from generating out of Tuckwell because there will be an overload on the line. So this line is going to evacuate all the power now and uh, uh, needless to just say the power that we have not been evacuating is the cheapest power in Kenya today uh, generated from hydro. Hydro generates at about four cents. But when the capacity of the line, the transmission line is not able to remove all the power because of the framework of transmission uh, or uh, what you call power mix, we take the solar first because solar's um, PPAs are on take or pay. And therefore we've been evacuating solar on that line and we are unable to evacuate Tuckwell Hydro because uh, there will be an overload and that will cause a problem to the whole network. A few times when such an overload happens, it switches off the whole country because you don't know what even uh, your circuit breakers in your house. When it feels an overload, it kind of drips. So what we have come to witness is the receiving of that transformer, which has been delivered, and that will now help us to complete the project here. There's another transformer, uh, about uh, 70, 70 tons, which is just past Gilgil, which is coming for Kitale. And uh, in another three months, we should then be able to commission this new route and remove that constraint, dispatch out of uh, Tuckwell, and... Uh, be able to go into the electricity mix that will slightly reduce the cost of power. So that's why we're here today, to basically witness the arrival of these two transformers that have been held in the warehouse for quite, in the, in the bonded warehouse in Mombasa for quite a while. So what the government did when they came in place was to accelerate the ongoing projects which were near completion so that we can uh, bring down the cost of power by unlocking some of those challenges. You'll also appreciate that to serve this area, the power has been taking a very long route and looping back to come and service this town. When that happens, we get a lot of power losses because the longer the line is, there's impedance or resistance in the line. Um, you, lose, you lose so much. And you do know our network today loses about, we'll, we have power losses of about 22% uh, in total, both transmission, commercial, and technical losses. So when we have this kind of short routes, high capacity routes, we are able to reduce that losses and the losses that would otherwise be paid by us because the generators don't lose. We pay the generators. When they generate, we've just come from um, uh, Meningai where they today started feeding uh, the grid with some 35 megawatts. They'll be paid for their 35 megawatts. But by the time that power reaches the load centers, or where the consumption happens. Uh, we could be delivering uh, a loss of about 20% of 35% is about um, uh, six minus six. So you'll be talking about, we'll, we'll deliver about 29, 28 uh, megawatts to the market. And yet we are being the generator for 35. So the question is who pays for the loss of um, six megawatts? Six megawatts is a lot of power. It is paid by you and me, the customers. It is paid by industry. So when we reduce and improve the transmission links or uh, networks and distribution networks, we are able to bring down the losses and therefore bring down the cost of uh, energy to our people. We are all concerned. We want to bring down the cost of power because the cost of doing business in a country is what attracts investors. If the cost of doing business is high, the firms which go to the market to compete with their products uh, faces a challenge because uh, their product will not be competitive. The cost affordability when we do last mile and deliver power uh, to a people who are almost all on what you call a lifeline tariff is a challenge. 
So by removing this constraint, we'll be able to reduce the losses. More importantly, generate the cheaper power out of Tuckwell or uh, uh, bring the Tuckwell into the mix, uh, which is cheap. But more importantly, we are now facing a big global challenge with climate environmental challenges due to climate change. And a lot of this power, all this power out of Northrift is green energy. Uh, Tuckwell, 100% green, it is hydro, hydro generation. The Meningai, we've just come from a uh, packer just now, all 100% green. And we need to really move this energy to market and be able to attract industry because industry wants to use green energy today, because energy, for those of us who everybody is concerned with the environment, to, I think we've reached a time where whenever you buy anything, you'll be asking, is the steel that has been used to manufacture all these uh, towers green? Did it come out of green manufacturing? Was green energy used? Was green mining used? Was green, green, green employed? Is the shirt you are wearing green? Is the shoes you are wearing green? So that you can all help to conserve and maintain the challenge of climate change. Climate change uh, for the last five years caused a big challenge in our country. You do which it was not going to the grid, uh, but sometimes we are able to push. And uh, out of, say, 2,000 megawatts, that is uh, one out of uh, 20. You're talking about uh, something like what, 5%? Five, five so the generation from Tuckwell will basically, when you load that cheaper price into the mix of uh, 2,500, which is the load that we put to the load centers today, uh, it will bring, it will come down, but uh, not so much significant. We've come out of uh, PACA. If PACA dispatches what we are doing in PACA, we commissioned 35 megawatts to, uh, or 35 megawatts is getting to the grid today, though on a 30-day 30 30 test period. Uh, that is something else coming on. If we put in a percentage, when we remove the constraint and be able to reduce power losses, that is another reduction on losses, and we should be able to also bring that into reducing the... So I think the, the economist in the office will do the arithmetic and will progressively work to bring down the cost of energy in Kenya. To feed to the people, you need to take it down to 132, take it down to 33 or 66, down to 11. Because you feed people at the voltage which uh, the small distribution network can manage. So those investments are necessary. It is important to acknowledge that that problem exists not only around Tuckwell. And when we uh, basically uh, boost the voltage or um, uh, move the voltage up from the generation of 11 to 220, we need to invest and have a, a small substation which allows the voltages that can be consumed by the residents. We are doing this in um, Lake Turkana to sort out the Leongalani community. We should do this in Takwell to sort out the, the community so that we do not just go to a generation area. I think traditionally what happened in most generation areas like where we've come from in Paka, you'll go there and it is so remote that sometimes if you are generating and there is no habitation, then you don't step down because it's expensive to step down because power sometimes is generated in very remote areas. So if you step down for purpose of feeding to the community, which is not quite there, you, it is the uh, economics. But because of residents in an area like uh, Tuckwell, which has grown, it is important to have that step down to, to 33 and distribute to the home state. In the last mile program, which is uh, basically working on access uh, of power to our people. Uh, it is a program that we're saying we need to move from the current 75%. You know we're 23% in 2013, and we moved to 77 today. We need to go to 100% in the next uh, maybe three years. And then therefore, those are interim investment prog programs, but like you said, it's important that the communities from where we generate power uh, should really enjoy and have the benefit of that resource.